Hello and welcome back to the Champagne Rugby Podcast. On today's episode, we have Frederick Nagoza from Combat Rugby. And we have a very interesting talk going on about 1v1s and the future of rugby in itself. So, Freddie, how are you doing? I'm well, thanks, Hamish. Thank you for having me on the, on the show. Absolute pleasure. And Adam, yourself? Ah, I'm great, Hamish. Uh, it's great to have Freddie on today. I'm very excited to see what uh, where Combat Rugby came from and where it could get to. So, let's get it going. So, Freddie, yeah. just to give the audience that might not know Combat Rugby an introduction uh, about yourself and how, how you it all came about. Um, okay, so I'm Fred Ngoza. Um, I was a professional rugby player here in South Africa. I started playing for the Cheetahs when I was 23 years old and obviously played my rugby career. Recently retired when I came upon the one versus one rugby idea and I started defining the, the sport as I, from my perspective and then taking it out to my local market of South African rugby. Um, the idea I got when I was in Poland, I was playing with, with Arkagdinia Rugby, um, the, 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 the guy who hosted the first uh, one versus one challenge in Poland. Um, Gregory Hart came and presented the idea to me. Um, we refined the idea and that's how one versus one rugby, came, um, as we have it at the moment, came to South Africa and we've taken it to the South African market. So, for those that don't know what one v one rugby, that this is where you are. You've got the you're, you've got a runner and a tackler, and the go, the aim of this is for the runner to get past and score a try, and the tackler to make yeah. the tackle. Yes. So it, it it was when we were looking at the at the designing the product, we we looked at the fundamentals of rugby, which is being in possession of the ball and being without possession of the ball. And that's when we then started um, looking at this will be the, the, the ultimate test of, of technique, decision making, uh, execution um, in attack and in defense. So what it then came down to is basically you have two opponents on the field um, uh, rotating at a, at, a, at a specific time. The one is an attacker, the one is defender, and then the roles are, are then reversed after the, the, the completion of, of the, the play. Um, so yeah, that's why we, it came down to eight rounds. We initially started with four rounds and then looked at also having um, an element of, of someone being able to come back uh, the, the comeback kid giving him a chance also and that's when it, we, we decided that um, eight rounds would be would be the most um, sufficient way of us playing the game and that's how it ended up as at the moment when we are running with eight rounds. Uh, so four reps on, on attack and four reps on defense. Uh, the first guy to get to five gets the, the win. And Freddie, you mentioned there that you played for the Cheetahs. So, yes. how would 15 aside rugby training compare to one versus one rugby training? Uh, so, when, when I started looking uh, at a, as a coach at how I would go about um, coaching my, my team, it obviously amplifies your, 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 your technique. Um, I think especially on, on defense. So, the defensive training would be, would be more looking at um, reactive training. So you're looking at, at max speed, you're looking at uh, getting the, the decision maker of, of, your, of your player sharper, and you're also looking at, at, at still having the power element of, of a rugby player. So when, you were, when we're looking at well, what it would be, it would essentially be a contact training um, in 15 for, for prepping the, the athletes for, for, for technique. And you as a coach are then able to, to, to add and, and see the, the exact um, needs of, of each um, individual in terms of technique and execution. And like that, I think the, the one versus one rugby also adds value to, to traditional rugby union, yeah. And how do you see it breaking down? Would it be position by position, weight class by weight class, a bit of both? How would the breakdown be in terms of 1v1 rugby? You know, in UFC, you have heavyweight, lightweight. Yes. heavyweight. Yes. How would 1v1 rugby look? I would, I would, like, to, I would like us to, to, to break it out. Obviously, the, the initial idea was positions. 
And then the more I start, we started looking into it, obviously the, the UFC format of weight classes makes a lot of sense because then you, you would be able to start putting, um, finding your, your, your Fijian wings that are 110 kilograms that would then have to be playing against um, a, a prop, you know, or a, a lock. And I think that, that makes a, a very interesting uh, scenario. It creates a very interesting scenario to be observed in terms of rugby. And so we are going to be going, at the moment, it's positional. We're looking at positionals with, with weight um, categories. So the, 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 the guidelines were for, for tight forwards, we're looking more uh, 108 and more. Uh, for loose forwards, we're looking at uh, 108 and less. Uh, for, for your half backs, you're looking at less than 80 kilograms. For your inside backs, you're looking at more than 90 kilograms. And then your, your outside backs, you would be looking at your, your between 90 or, or between 80 and 90 kilograms or 95. It becomes then. Interesting. Interesting. And what would be your dream matchup? If like you're on oh. the main event, combat rugby, oh. someone versus someone, who's your dream matchup to watch? Oh, man, I think the, 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 the conversation can... I think firstly the the Lucy's and the the inside backs offer the best um, the best action in terms of, of, of combat. So uh, you you would have to be looking at your combinations. I think in South Africa you you have you have who's going to win between your Dwayne Vermeulen and you, let's say a Quaha Smith. They are slightly different players. Um, you can put your Dwayne Vermeulen against the Adi Savia, who wins that that, con, that, that uh, combat, you know? And then you, you can look at players where we say Sonny Bill versus a um, uh, uh, player, let's say, Damien De Lindy of South Africa. I think it, it becomes really interesting when you start looking at, at high-performance players um, and you start thinking of, of what um, class they would be able to, to produce in terms of one versus one action. Um, and obviously this would be the goal. The goal would be to be able to create a, a, a professional roster, kind of like the UFC, and then have, have the ultimate athletes go at this and see um, the, the, the entertainment that comes from it. I, I would love to see uh, Abin Atzebef in, in the ring. And, uh, just power yes, driving. Yes, of through. course. That's everyone. Everyone would would wanna would wanna see that, you know. So let's say Ivan Etzebet against Dwayne Famila, who wins? <laughs> I think that's, oh, it's <laughs> tough, though, isn't it? Like, I would I would probably have my money on Etzebet just because he's a mat, he's just a beast, you know. Um, yeah. Who who would you want to? Who would be your scariest person to go against? Who would you not want to go against? Um, I think Evan would probably be one of them. Uh, I think uh, a guy like like Adi Savia would really be also extremely good at it. Um, you're thinking of, of a Quaha Smith would be really good at it, just because of the explosiveness, the the the, the explosive speed, the explosive power when the power element is necessary. I think you would. Um, Probably you wouldn't want to go against a couple of the Fijians. Uh, I think there are some monsters there that you you wouldn't uh, want to go against. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. know. Eh? I think like when you're looking at legends, you wouldn't want to go against like a, 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 a Jerome Kano, you know? Yeah. I think it, it would be a, a couple of scary uh, thoughts having a couple of those guys running at you. Or maybe even Manu Tuolangi, though, who, who, or one of the Tuolangi yeah, brothers. Tuolangi, you know, players like that. Oh, goodness. Imagine the, the um, who's the, 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 the Brumbies captain. He's also super explosive. A guy like Sinclair, uh, the prop from England, you know? Yeah, or Genge. It would it would be like I think you know it's it's a, in some places it would be kind of unfair because of the the size and also the speed that the guy can generate within within the space you know yeah and uh, Freddie like obviously that's down the line but at the moment you're after a couple of events how many live events have you done so far 
Uh, so we've done, we started with a demo where, where I, when I came back from, from Poland, we started in Pretoria with the Holocaust Club in Pretoria where I had the first one-on-one -on -one action. And then from there on, we have had about four events where we've had challenges. Um, so in, in like I, I wanted to tell you, in my in my market in South Africa, what we what we decided the, the the product would essentially be was it, we would take it to the communities, especially um, less fortunate communities, uh, rural communities uh, where rugby is, is is running deep, especially like communities of the Eastern Cape. There's so much talent that is untapped that I believe. And also in our market, there is kind of a, a, a shift happening and opening up a specific gap for, for, for me that I've identified in terms of spotting talent and creating development um, channels for these guys. So what the, the, the events that we have done last year were, were the trials in, in creating a, a combine system where we would then also be able to, to put a couple of wild cards into a one versus one challenge. And then obviously, you know, by, by, by the finalists, the finalists are really already cream of the crop rugby players that you can then look to develop and, and you know, to, to create a, a channel for, for them to get to high performance rugby. So that was the goal for us in, in, in South Africa. And then obviously, um, when we're looking at, at growing the, the, the Phoenix brand globally, we are looking at one versus one being a, a format to rugby that will bring specific, a, a unique um, atmosphere, a unique rugby experience that we will then be offering to, to the local communities that we will be reaching out to and also for uh, an experience for the, for the rugby player to, to try out, of course. That's pretty cool. So... Yeah, essentially, you believe that like they're the less developed players are the um the guys from backgrounds that aren't like private schooled and all. They have more of an opportunity to make it with the one v one, and then they can progress on to high performance rugby. That is yeah. that's essentially your goal in South Africa, is it? In in South Africa, the goal is obviously I I think because. I, I, I had to look at this where when I, when I, in my perspective, like I said, in my experience, um, if I didn't have a couple of things go my way from where I came from, um, no one would have would have thought of, of me becoming uh, the, the athlete that I become. And it's only solely because of the opportunities that were presented to me um, that I, I, I am the man that I'm sitting in front of you today, Adam, that I've, I've been to the places that I've been in the world because of what the sport has brought to me. And then when I had to look at the at, at my own background and I had to look at um, my market and what I know of, of our community, I know there is a there is a massive need for 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 development and finding new talent in rugby, because um, when when you are looking at at, at your Lucanio arm and your Mampibis, they came through at 26, 27. So that means you need to keep these guys playing until 26, 27. And I feel like the, the South African market at the moment is having a, a massive challenge in filling that need. And that's where one versus one for me um, comes into play for, for, for my specific market. I believe it is, it is a, a opportunity for, for guys to, to get involved because like I say, it's, it's a funda it breaks down right into the fundamental. So you're looking at not only um, at guys that are already playing the sport, I'm looking at, at um, introducing one versus one to, to, to kids that, are, uh, uh, that could be interested in the sport because it breaks it down, you know. I was looking at, at thinking about it when, you were, when, when I was seven years old, um, as, the, as the kid who, who was new to the game and you were playing against the guys that already had a year or two years experience, your opportunities of facing someone one-on-one -on -one are so much less because the, the game is just running, you know. At times that can be discouraging at some, at some point, but now when you have a one-on-one -on -one con, con, um, contact situation and you succeed, I believe this can build confidence. And this can also build like a, a, a growing market at, at the base of the South African market. I feel like we would be able to, to introduce uh, a whole, uh, you, you can look at in, um, converting uh, football players to rugby players. 
just by simply saying, okay, your objective as, as is, to, is to get past this guy. And then when it's your turn, your objective is to try and stop him. That is essentially the fundamentals of rugby. And then when I can start coaching from there, then I'm adding your passing, I'm adding your rucking, I'm adding your continuation of play. That then becomes where you are then introduced to the larger spectrum of rugby. So, so, so this is how um, I've, I see the product in my market as, as the future of what the sport could be in terms of talent development and then also in terms of, of, of reaching and, uh, and globalization of the sport. This is already a trend that is happening and now you are literally breaking it down to you don't need to have 12 guys playing in a sevens team or, or seven guys playing in a sevens team. You only need two guys that are that are willing to, to get better and from those two Two guys, you could essentially build your 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 squad. Freddie, this is so powerful. And just as you were talking there, one versus one, like I'm thinking in India, they have the game kabaddi. It's essentially yeah. similar, you know. Yeah. Like in countries like I lived in Spain, Hamish has lived in Spain. There's guys who want to be better at rugby, want this opportunity. Like if I'm good enough, I one versus one. That's all that matters. Whereas you might never have the team around you to sh- exhibit. Yeah your abilities. So I think this, the power of this within the sport in general could be massive. Like, and the US yeah. market could eat it up as well. So like, yeah, so we're starting off in South Africa and then we're looking to expand from there. So like, how would you see this working? So would we have teams in South Africa or all individually based and they grow from there like boxers or UFC fighters or is it more team based? So, How do you see? So in South Africa this year we will be attempting to to grow it as a as a team as a team format where you are then having your 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 tight forward a loose forward. We will define this obviously uh, building into the future into into weight classes. So you will you will be coming in as as your team of five. And you will be playing in the team knockout challenge against five other um, guys. So the tight forwards will play against each other. The loose forwards will play against each other. And then if you win three out of your five matches, you, you, your team obviously then progresses. And the, the, the losing team is eliminated from the team knockout challenge. And then um, whether, whether one versus one comes in is when we are doing combine events. So combine events will be the development structures that we are trying to create by developing um, the, the junior talent. So we are looking at under 21s and they will then be registering as, as individuals and they will play in their individual uh, positions out. And then we will get the, the, the results and then also the, the testing results of the combine for, for the, for, to creating the top 10 of the, of the combine athletes. But the, the focus this year is to grow the sport in South Africa as a team uh, challenge. So yeah, like five versus five. And what, what's like some of the most important qualities to, to be successful in the 1v1? Because obviously it's a fairly different from rugby 15 aside yes i think when you're looking at at, the, at it in a technical perspective it comes down to the, there's always an element of power that needs to be utilized your your footwork is an important thing um tackle execution is an important thing selection of your tackle is an important thing so it comes to um, when let's say we're looking at the five elements in a player um, in terms of skills, you're looking at um, the endurance factor is there, power is there, speed is there, footwork is there, and then decision making, so reaction. And then when you're looking at um, in play sequence, you're looking at tackle execution, you're looking at decision making on attack, um, you're looking at discipline in your height. As a, as a defender to stop from penalties and things like that. So it, it's, it's, it, it highlights especially the, the, the fundamentals of, of, of tackling and fundamentals of ball carrying. Um, you really need to be spot on. And the, the just focus also because it, the, the intensity is really high um, and the reps are really fast. So if, you, if, you, if you're not switched on, you are losing that game from the first rep. Do you think Freddy. it will? Um, 
improve player safety, having the the improving the tackling ability and everything in in the whole. I, I, I absolutely think so. I absolutely think so because um, uh, around June last year, I had to be doing my 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 box mod, which is our coaching qualification in South Africa in terms of safety. And then I realized, you know, the, 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 there's a lot of, of injuries that happen because they are so, it's reactive. You have three, four bodies around going for one ball. And um, when you're looking at one-on-one, -on -one, the, the, there is no reaction to, to catching a ball. You, you, you know you're in attack or you are in defense, you know. The, the, the space, the, the, the momentum that is um, able to be generated in the space is limited because the space is limited. You don't get situations where a guy gets 10 meters to run onto you and you have to stand your ground, you know. And then you are looking at also when you are looking at the, the, the aim of, the, of creating collisions. The collision in one versus one is, 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 is to try and go over and, and the collision point is the finish of the, of the, of the sequence of play, you know, where in, 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 in traditional rugby, there's still three other guys, four other guys going for that rock, going for that ball. So they are, they are, they are still, they are, and then obviously, like you say, when, when you're starting to improve the decision making, the, 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 the tackling technique of the players, then it adds uh, even more value to, to player safety, I believe, yeah. Ready? Just there now, you're after mentioning it a couple times, a tackle selection. So yeah. what, for the, our listeners, what to you, what does that mean? Like, what, what am I looking at to make that decision? So what so, type of tackles can I make? So tackle selection, you're looking at um, when, I, when I'm tracking the defender, I have, um, am I tracking the hip? Am I tracking uh, the, the ball? Am I tracking the inside pay? These are all triggers that, that, that you are taught in, in rugby, you know, to, to you. But when, I, when I'm saying tackle selection, um, as a player, you have that one split second to make that decision. Do I decide then to go low? Um, to the ankles low? Do I do I go to the hips? Do I go to 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 the stomach height, or do I go for for the for the chest hit? You know, so those are are, are, are different tackles that require different footwork, that require different body positioning, that require you know different execution. So when you're coming to one on one. You, you, you want to be reading your, your attacker and then making the, the selection of which type of tackle am I going to make in this situation based on my footwork. Am I, am I, are my feet placed right? That, will in, that, that was me as a player, you know. So for me, um, if my feet were placed right and I have the perfect timing, the, 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 I have the timing of the ball, I'm, off, I'm coming off the line, um, my target is already tracked, then you decide, okay, which type of tackle am I, am I going to hit this guy high? Am I going to hit it low? Am I going to get as low as possible to try and get back up onto the ball? So that's what tackle selection means to me, you know. Uh, it's a term I use in my coaching because you, 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 have, to, you have to be equipped we're with different type of tackles in different situations because when I'm when I'm defending, I'm solely dealing with a specific situation at a specific time, and that situation consistently changes, and that is what the what the 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 the, the beauty of, of of continuous rugby one versus or, or sevens rugby rugby union is is the continuation of play, being able to, to identify different triggers for yourself as a player and being able to, to execute on those decisions based on your triggers. What's the, um, what's the story of where you got this all started and how, how did that all come about? Uh, one versus one. Yeah. Yeah, so like I said, I was in Poland and then Gregory Hutt presented the idea. The first one was a beach challenge. They played it on sand. Um, I think the, the, the field was about 20 by 20 meters, one versus one combat. And when I saw the product, I was like, okay, firstly, for me, in my perspective, you, we should take it back to, to the traditional rugby field. That's where you, you, you should go to turf instead of the sand. And then I, I, I looked at what are, what are the dimensions of the field and why. 
Um, and that's where we, we, we have come up with, with what we have now we, as, as the product that we have right now. It's, it's from uh, evolution of what was done on the beach challenge to, to what we have as the one versus one challenge now. So when, when you say the product, does that mean that you have the sole rights to run these tournaments? Uh, yes, we, we have a design patent on the on the one versus one product as it is right now. And then uh, the, we like I've said also, that's why the specifications of the field uh, are, are still intellectual property that is um, being kept in disclosure. And then um, what, what we are looking at is obviously creating the partnerships. So one versus one right now is 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 a sole patented and trademarked by by the Phoenix Sports Group. Yes. So would you want to partnership with like World Rugby, for example, or in the in the leagues to try and grow there, or where where do you kind of see your growth and entrance into the different markets being? Obviously, there's a lot of grassroots you were talking about. Um, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of grassroots. So my, my my initial thought about about the product was at grassroots level, I, I would um, have a, an agreement with World Rugby to be able to to introduce and, and rugby to more communities and get the, the 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 game more globalized as it's it's going. But when it comes to high performance, um, it, it will. I'm looking at it as 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 a as a, a private trademark that we will be running through privately. Um, looking at the UFC, looking at what uh, Dana White is doing right now. So I think it's a it's a proper market for us to be doing in in private. And Freddie, you mentioned there you started on the beach. You wanted to bring it back to grass. Like yes. when this reaches its highest level. Will it be an arena sport with AstroTurf? How do you see this being presented at the highest level it can get to? AstroTurf. Um, at the highest level, um, obviously, because it, it's already because of, of, of the trials we did last year. Weather became a, a, a concern for me. So obviously, then we, uh, we started thinking, okay, no, the, the field is relatively small. The option of moving it indoors is, is a is a is a is a real uh, um, way for us to go. So at the end of the day, I think it will be an arena sport um, where that is played on artificial turf. Will it be entrance music, things like that? Yes, of course. That's the whole point. So now the nice thing is we have ringles, of course, where you you have ent entrance music. Um, what we're attempting this year is then obviously to, to start creating the, the, the social. So the product is, is, is a sports recreational social. So what we are looking in South Africa is, is, is trying to bring people of, of various backgrounds together with the sport and then able to, to have a, a, a social by, by celebrating um, courage, by celebrating um, youth uh, talent, you know, participation in sports. This is our, our goals and our vision for, for what we are trying to do here in our local community. So we are now looking at also having an after party where the, the winners are then celebrated and we have some music and we have a couple of drinks. And like that, we are creating a socioeconomic integration from uh, through sport, yeah. Sounds ex it sounds really good, like really exciting. Um, and I love the way you talk about it as well. You're so passionate and everything. It's like, makes me want to go out and do some 1v1s. Uh, do you do you, do you still do one v one yourself? How how often do you get in the in the arena? Let's no, say, I, I, <laughs> dude, like for me, my I haven't been in the ring. Um, the wife since I've I've, re, I've retired from playing has been so much more happier with my safety. So she has kind of been holding me back from being into the ring. But I I really think the 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 first professional. Um, challenge i would actually like to participate in myself it's a it's a kind of a, of a bit of a hidden agenda that i have with the sport but we'll see in, in the long term i'll have to prepare again yeah sounds great sounds great and you could have like individual merchandising you could have all these yeah. things around it um yeah. so if you were in it you'd obviously fancy yourself to win would you uh yep. um 
Yeah, I think I would. Um, I always gave myself a shot as a player, so obviously that's what appealed to me. I, I, I thought I would be relatively good in this, and that's why I liked the product from the first time um, I laid my eyes on it. You know, so I, I would definitely give myself a shot. Just the the fact of retirement, obviously, you need some sharpening up. So that twelve week program would be crucial for me. And what would it look like? Would you have a, a, a defense coach, an attack coach, and a personal trainer? How would it all break down? How would you, what would your camp look like? A twelve week camp for Freddie to get back ready <laughs> to get back into action. Um, well, it would it would probably be with a with a with a personal trainer. And then looking at um, some some explosive, um, I've I've been looking at the 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 UFC approach to 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 prep, you know, um, and camps that they go to. I think it would be a very similar kind of of, of approach to it. And then I would I would um, obviously have a, a defensive coach that maybe can, can con consult on technique and things like that. And then obviously I think attacking coach is also crucial um, for, for, for just attacking evasive work, um, reactive work and, and triggers, you know, to, to be able to make those spot on decisions. So I think you, you would need a personal trainer, a defense consultant and an attacking consultant. Interesting. And I know we mentioned it a while ago, you said you'd start with teams and clubs, but could you see a combat rugby gym becoming a thing? Like, I know guys in Ireland go to a jiu-jitsu gym or an MMA gym, but a combat rugby gym become a place. That might be a very interesting idea, Adam. I've never thought about it. <laughs> it might really be a, a, a very a very interesting prospect, eh? Um, because I think you would then be able to introduce classes for under 9s, under 16s, under um, amateurs, and you would be able to then go all the way to, to pros, you know? And then uh, you're obviously looking at, at being able to consult on, on professionals that want to then be looking at their defense specifically. And that's what that's what the American football guys do, you know, when they are off season, they are going to a specific coach working on specific things for the next season to be better at. So I think it, it, it would definitely be an interesting way to go about it. Yeah, and also... Uh, uh... Could you see it being an option where someone like Chelsea and Colby, we all met him first on the seven circuit. Could he start on the combat rugby circuit as an individual, be a superstar, go to the sevens and then go to 15s? Would you see someone who can play across yeah. the three codes of rugby? Would you see that as, in the future? Yes, definitely. Definitely, I would be able to see that. Um, I think um, when you are looking at already... Uh, specializing players or the guys that have been the the the, the experiment with this for me would be being able to identify uh, talent that you are then able to develop to be able to play all three all three formats. That would be the the, the experiment from my side. That would be like a rugby superstar, which I think I mean the game is lacking like yeah. a superstar thing right now, isn't it? So. In football, you've got exactly. Messi, you've got you got Ronaldo. Uh, rugby, that I mean, that we're slowly but surely making some like bigger names. But it because rug, the nature of rugby is that it's all about the yeah. team and the team sport, so you don't yeah. focus on individuals. But when you do have this one v one format, that's all about the individuals. So you actually are yeah. having that opportunity to bring in big names, create yeah, the names, super. create a platform, and you create you create a, a story that people can get behind. And you get like with the yes. underdog or something like that. So I can definitely yes. see that working quite well. And who who is it that kind of inspires you uh, when you were growing up and playing rugby? Did you have any like uh, players that you looked up to or coaches that you now are inspired by that changed your coaching style? Uh, I'm influenced by so many different uh, people, Hamish, because of, of my background. Like I, like I said, when this, when this started... Um, I started playing the game at seven years old because my my granddad wanted me to to be out of the 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 the, the location, you know, where so to be out of out of mischief, 
sport was a, was a go-to for me. So that's why I, I believe in, in, the, in the power of sport, especially in my society. Um, and um, the different people that get to touch your life and uh, the, the prospects that, that are created through sports, you know. So um, I, I can look back at, and I can say my, my, my granddad would be the first one. Um, that was a major um, important um, element for me to be able to, to, to be in, in sport. Um, after that, um, I had a, uh, in high school when I was 16, I had a, a, a teacher, Quest uh, de Jager, who really believed and, and helped me to become um, the next level that I needed to become at the time. And then obviously I went to an academy at, at 18 to, to, that is fully funded by a mining company in South Africa. So I was, I was in an academy that was paid for me, um, from, that created the prospect um, of going to the University of Free State. And then from there on also, I had major people that touched my life to be able to, to become a, a high performance player. You know, you have coaches like Franco Smith that are that I now um, have some relation to in terms of my coaching styles. And then obviously you, 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 you just need a, a community of people that believe and see you, you know. So that's that's why I believe um, in, in in creating this platform for 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 different talents to be seen, and to be to be seen and then created and and believed in, you know. So that that's what the Phoenix is. That's what we are trying to achieve in our community. Yeah, having that community element is definitely going to be important, especially because it keeps in with the original traditional rugby values, but then. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're giving opportunities to people to then express themselves and, like you said, get, get, get out of trouble and mischief, uh, yeah. and be able to uh, play, play rugby, do sports, and who knows where they can go from there. It's good opportunities. So, Freddie, obviously, you're an ex-back row forward, so you might be a bit biased here, but which position would come out on top in one versus one rugby? Um, yeah, Adam, I think like when you are looking at the role of specific positions on in a rugby team, your, your loose forwards and your, your inside backs are supposed to be the, the really good guys in the sport um, or the superstars because of the different elements that you, that you have to tick as a, as a rugby player in that specific position. Uh, looking at uh, tackle technique, looking at explosive power, having some element of evasive running, um, you know, so yeah, I think that when you, like we discussed earlier, when you're looking at the, the superstars, you would, uh, you would definitely be creating the first superstars, I, I would bet would be the, the uh, a loose forward or inside back. Interesting, interesting. And um, yeah, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see Ardi Sevilla versus, say, Khaleesi versus Dialende versus... Even Robbie Hinshaw from Ireland, I think, would have a good shout. Or Bundy yeah, Aki. Yes. Um, George Van der Fleer would also be a very good candidate, eh? Um, just because of the type of play. He's explosive, good in the tackles, um, you know, evasive at times when he needs to be. And I think he would also be a very good candidate for, for, for uh, a player like that. Perfect. Josh Van der Fleer, if you're listening to this podcast, please get in touch. <laughs> Get in touch, <laughs> yeah. So, what are your? We've got the World Cup coming up this year, uh, Freddie. What's your What's your predictions for the twenty twenty three? I've been watching the, the the French team for the last couple of years, um, and I think they are in a good place to be to be able to to looking at the World Cups. Um, a good performance for them in the World Cup, but yeah, I, I, I would have to say, obviously, I'm a South African fan. Um, but I think the, the, it's time for, for the French team to be able to come through. When you're looking at DuPont um, playing the last couple of years, um, being a nominated uh, World Player of the Year, I think the group that they've invested in the last couple of years is obviously, um, um, I think, a, a good collection of players. You obviously can't uh, throw away New Zealand. Um, they will always be a contender. Um, same Ireland has been coming really well um, in the last couple of, of months. So I think Ireland will also be a, a good prospect to be a World Cup. I think it's going to be one of the most interesting World Cups in terms of, of the quality of rugby that will be produced. 
because of the, the trend that is um, happening in the sports. Um, everyone is trying to get better. Everyone is, is investing in the sport and uh, in growing their own market. So I think it's an interesting time for the sport. I think so too. It's uh, it's going to be kind of like this and then shoot up uh, in terms of popularity, mm -hmm. especially with the yes. World Cup being, taking place in the US um, in 2027, yeah. I believe. Um, I think 2031. 2031, yeah. I think the, the American market is the, is also going to be an interesting market to keep an eye on over the next um, couple of years, of course. Um, in America, when you're thinking one of us is one, uh, it's a market that we are very interested in and I've been looking into the, the last couple of years. Um, you are then looking at one versus one as the, as the answer of um, if I go there and I would invest, let's say, a month of, co of contact of rugby training to a specific group of, of NFL or football athletes and then trying to make that transition, then you would be essentially looking at answering who wins between rugby and, and football, you know. I think it's the closest place that you would be able to put candidates from the two and then try and measure against each other. So it's a very interesting proposition to be looking at so the colorado raptors or tiger rugby could be great uh, options for you in the u.s um yeah so if you were to put an nfl player versus a rugby player like are you going watching the super bowl tonight who would you pick to win oh oh goodness i would, I would have to look at them in positions eh um yeah when you're looking at Aaron Donald. <laughs> um, I think. Event. Yeah, I think. But then you you have to think of who would you who would you put. Then you're putting him against like I would want to see. Let's say uh, what is the guy from the uh, McCaffrey Christian McCaffrey versus Aaron Donald? Who wins? <laughs> Ty Kyle, Ty Kyle. It'd be like that's I suppose in rugby terms you're talking Taniele Tupo. Versus Chesney Colby, who wins? Yeah, isn't it? That would be yeah. that question. Yeah. But the, the nice thing about the 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 running backs, obviously, they are they have that element of of contact. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily to put like a, a wide receiver. Wide receiver I would put against a, a a wing or something, an outside back. Uh, a running back I would put against like an inside center, outside center. Uh, a guy like Aaron Donald, you put against, um, let's say you put against a, a loose forward. Um, and that is the contest, yeah. We could be on to something. We could be on to something here. <laughs> uh, well, I suppose that's a good place to wrap it up. Uh, rugby versus NFL. So yes. um, we'll wrap up the podcast here. Thanks very much for coming on, Freddie. Uh, if Thank people you. are looking for you online, where can they look? Uh, you can find us at the Phoenix Post Group. If you have any questions, if you would like to collaborate for One versus One, please reach out to us um, in different markets. Like we are saying, uh, we are trying to get to different markets to be able to see what, what this product can be. Uh, so, yeah, we are looking for partners. You can reach out to us on, on our uh, Instagram um, at phoenix underscore sports underscore group. And then on um, on TikTok, you will find us also at One versus One uh, Rugby. And yeah, we are working on our website. So our website will be on soon. And then we are looking to start the series for this year in South Africa. Uh, we are looking at having some, maybe streaming a couple of the events live. Um, it's a system that we are looking to extend. So it's an interesting time. You can keep an eye out for us on our socials. And on our socials, we'll provide more information, yeah. Perfect. If any of the millions listening are interested, that's where to find them. Hamish Kenny, thanks for coming. Freddie and Goza, see you later. Bye for now. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank babe. you, guys. Have a good night.